now we will see slave dynasty you can go on my channel i have made various various videos on ancient india uh, ancient history uh, different and sociology also i have made on the video so as per requirement you can go on my channel and search for it okay so we will start slave dynasty or mamluk dynasty mamluk dynasty was was, uh, was also known as slave dynasty what was the reason behind it why it was called so we will look into it so we will start from mamluk origins how mamluk origins okay point wise in the short form and rest of the thing i am explaining by the word so mamluk dynasty is also called as a slave dynasty and mamluk literally means owned and it refers to a powerful military caste called mamluks which originated in 9th century uh, ad in the islamic empire of abbasid caliph so if i'm if i want to give a background of mamluk so mamluk means owned okay and it refers to a powerful military caste refers to a powerful military caste called mamluks which originated in originated in 9th century ad or c okay in the islamic empire of the abbasid caliph where islamic empire of the abbasid caliph the mamluk wielded a uh, military and political power in the egypt iraq and india they wielded they formed where what uh, which power uh, they formed uh, military and political power where in egypt iraq and india so although they were slaves they were held in high regard by their masters and they were mostly generals and soldiers who fought for their master so they're acting as a, uh, they were like the slaves for them but they regarded as a uh, respect for uh, respect was given and they regard by their masters and they were mostly generals and soldiers who fought for their masters and mamluk dynasty was established in delhi by established in delhi by kutubuddin aibak who was kutubuddin aibak and he was the ambassador of i think mohammad of ghori okay uh, he was the ambassador of uh, i have already made on video kutubuddin aibak rajputs important by the commander of mohammad of ghori okay established in the delhi by kutubuddin aibak and kutubuddin aibak who made the kutub minar okay kutubuddin aibak so we will see uh, what slave dynasty is so uh, it was established by kutubuddin aibak again slave dynasty was established by none other than kutubuddin writing kutub uddin aibak okay and uh, dynasty lasted from dynasty lasted from 1206 to 1290 ad okay and it was the first of the dynasty to rule as the delhi sultanate 
first to rule as Delhi Sultanate and dynasty ended when uh, Jaladud, uh, Jaladin Firoj Khilji overthrew the last Mumluk, uh, Mamluk ruler Muizuddin Kakabad in 1290. So this dynasty uh, ruled till uh, when uh, dynasty ended when Jalaluddin Firoj Khilji overthrew the last Mamluk ruler Muizuddin Kaika Bad in 1290 and dynasty was succeeded by the Khilji or the Khalji dynasty and then the second dynasty of Delhi Sultanate so Delhi after this that uh, slave dynasty then started the uh, Delhi Sultanate the second dynasty or the Khilji dynasty now we will dig deep into it so it was just an introduction how the after this that uh, next dynasty will occur that Khalji dynasty so it was over it will be over till slave dynasty okay so we will write just introduction in part and now we will dug deep into it after this so dynasty was succeeded by the Khilji dynasty the second dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate okay so now we will look into who, who was Kutubuddin Ayabak I have just given short in, uh, introduction about him so Kutubuddin Ayabak Twelve hundred six to twelve hundred ten eighty. Okay. As we know, he was the first ruler of Mumluk dynasty. He started the Mumluk dynasty, first ruler of Mumluk dynasty. I will give lots of wording here now so so he born to a Turkish family in Central Asia so Turk invasion I have already talked the video I have made a video on it so you can watch the Turk invasion then Arab invasion uh, Arab invasion first then Turk invasion then this will come so sold as a and he sold and he was sold as a slave to Muhammad of Ghori so the ruler of Ghori in Afghanistan so he was sold as slave to Muhammad of Ghori the ruler of Ghor in Afghanistan I have already it, it this topic will come in Turkish invasion so you will know about Muhammad of Ghori in Turkish invasion in Afghanistan so Abak rose up the ranks and became Ghori's trusted general and commander so Abak was Abak rose up the ranks and became Ghori's trusted general and commander okay and he was given he was given the charge of Ghori's Indian position he was completely trustable for him after 119280 okay and he when Ghori was killed in the battle like when the Ghori was killed in the battle so Abak declared himself as the Sultan of Delhi in after the uh, after the death of Ghori he declared himself the Sultan of Delhi in 1206 AD okay and when uh, st and they started he started the construction started the construction of the Kuwaitul 
Islam Moscow in Delhi and this is the one of the first Islamic monuments in northern India he also began the construction he also began the cons construction of Qutub Minar in Delhi okay and he was also known as the Lakhbaksh for his generosity however he was also responsible for the destruction and desecration of many Hindu temples. he he destructed lots of Hindu temples also in in his time he reigned till his death in 1210 and he was said to have been trampled to death by a horse like it was said like he was he came in the by foot of a horse and he dead because of it and after this he was succeeded by he was succeeded by Aram Shah. See, uh, as a history part of, you just have to know what happened when they came. That's it. No need to dug so deep that in the story. In exam also, in any government exam, they will not ask that what, uh, uh, when did happen, from whom they married, what was their story. No, just the introduction part. You have to know like what happened, what how which type of person he was what he built that's it only after that you have to write just expand those things in a sentence form okay after this aram shah came so the il tutmish reign came press il tutmish reign when one two one one two one two three six AD okay so Aram Shah Aram Shah was not a very uh, strong ruler he was a weak ruler and it is not clear whether he was a son of Abak or not who was he it is not clear and he was conspired against by a group of nobles who invited uh, Shamsuddin il Tutmish to be the ruler and il Tutmish was a son-in-law of Abak he was il Tutmish was the son-in-law like if I say Aram Shah was a weak ruler and it is not clear whether he was a son of Abak or not and he was conspired against by a group of nobles who invited Samsuddin Il Tutmish to be the ruler and Il Tutmish was a son-in-law of Abak and he ruled Guri regions of northern India and he was a Turk slave born in Central Asia and Il Tutmish was the greatest of the slave rulers of Delhi and he shifted his capital from Lahore to Delhi that uh, Il Tutmish was greatest of the slave of Delhi he shifted his capital from Lahore to Delhi and how they what was the policy then invasion of Il Tutmish so Il Tutmish forces captured Bihar in 1210 and invaded Bengal in 1225 and during the first half of the 1220s Il Tutmish neglected Indus river valley which was under the controversy between the Mongols Khwarezm kings Kwabacha so um, so the post the decline of the Mongol and Khwarezmian threat Kabacha took over the region but Il Tutmish invaded his territory during the 1228 and 1229 so let me write it actually the spelling is very difficult so during the first half of the 1220s Il Tutmish neglected Indus 
river, river valley which was under the controversy between the Mongols the Khwar Ajm kings and Khwabcha post the decline of the Mongol and the Khwarajmian trade Khwabcha took over the region but Il Tutmish invaded his territory during two two eight two one two two nine eighty. Okay. So he defended his empire that Il Tutmish defended his empire against Mongol invaders and resisted the Rajputs also. And twelve twenty one he stopped an invasion by the Chengi Changiz Khan. And he completed the construction of Kuwatul Islam Mosque and Kutub Kutub Minar that I have already talked about. So he uh, he completed all the construction and set up the administrative machinery for the kingdom. He built mosques, water mo works, and other amenities at Delhi, making it fit to the seat of power. As he was sitting at the center of the, uh, he was sitting as a center from the Delhi, so he was making uh, Delhi as feels like that it is the power, it is the powerful area of him. So he built mosques, water mo works, and the amenities for Delhi, and he introduced the two coins of Sultanate, the silver tanka and the copper jital. So he introduced the two coins of Sultanate, the silver tanka and the copper jital, and also introduced the iktadari system in which the kingdom was divided into iktas, which were assigned to nobles in exchange of salary. And he died in 1236 and was succeeded by his daughter Rajia. He died in 1236 eh, and succeeded by his daughter Rajia Sultan as he did not consider his sons equal to the task he does not like he does not consider his son as so much powerful so that he will rule the empire so he gave a uh, doctor uh, daughter uh, Rajia as the control of the empire so Rajia Sultan ruled from 1236 to uh, 1246 so Rajia Sultan reign was 1236 to 1240 okay she was born in 1205 as uh, Iltutmish daughter and was given a sound of education by her daughter he was uh, sorry he was given a sound of education by her father that uh, whatever the education was there she got from her father and she was the first and the last muslim woman to rule over delhi she was the first the most important thing she was the first and last muslim women to rule over the delhi okay and also known as Rajia ul Din because Kutubuddin has the name of father so before ascending to the throne of Delhi after her father death the reign was briefly handed over her half brother Ruknud Firuj but after Firuj's assassination within six months of his ascendancy the nobles agreed to place Rajia on the throne see the, the half of the throne was given to his uh, to uh, to his to her brother but after six months he was also assassinated and the complete throne was given to the Rajia Sultan and she was known as an efficient and she was known as an efficient ruler and she was married to Malik Iktiar Uddin Altunia the governor of Batinda so just remember that she was married she was married to the 
governor of Batinda and she was reportedly killed by her brother's forces as the, her brother was also assassinated so the brother's forces killed her uh, and her brother Muj uh, Mujuddin Bahram Shah succeeded her so her brother Mujuddin Bahram Shah succeeded her and Giyazuddin Balban after this came so the notable ruler after uh, like Bairam Shah like Mujuddin Bairam Shah succeeded her but he was not so important that reign that so much not written about him in the history so after the uh, Rajia after the Rajia the notable ruler was after Rajia the notable ruler was Giyas Uddin Balban and he was the ninth Sultan in the Mamluk dynasty he was the ninth Sultan in Mamluk dynasty ok and he was the Wajir of the grandson of Ultutmish uh, the grandson of Ultutmis he was act as the wazir so uh, I will just brief here so I got some questions uh, once like why they are called slave dynasty still uh, like some people are confused like so it the victorious Turkish invader like see the victorious Turkish invaders left behind a slave general Kutubuddin Ayavak as a viceroy of the conquered lands in the north India Okay, as I have told that Kutubuddin Abak was the uh, slave for the Muhammad of Ghori. Okay, so uh, he founded the Mamluk dynasty. He founded the Mamluk dynasty. Like after the death of the Ghori, uh, he founded the uh, Mamluk dynasty. Okay, and uh, he made Delhi as capital and the word Mamluk means owned I have already talked in the Arabic language since the Sultans of this dynasty were earlier slaves or were the sons of former slaves the Mamluk dynasty came to be known as slave dynasty okay so I think this doubt is clear that why it is called as a slave dynasty okay so we will coming coming back to that Ghiazuddin uh, Balban okay so he was the wazir of the grandson of Il Tutmish and born of Turkish origins his ordinal name was Bahauddin no need to remember it and he was purchased as a slave by Il Tutmish he was also he was purchased as the slave by Il Tutmish ok and he rose up the ranks quickly he rose up the ranks quickly he carried out successful military campaigns as an officer and after the Nasir's death uh, Nasir was uh, grandson of Il Tutmish uh, uh, he was the wazir of the grandson of Il, Tut Il Tutmish whose name was uh, Nasir and when the Nasir died the Balban declared himself that this Balban declared himself as, uh, mm, as as the former did not have any male hair so Bourbon declared himself as the Sultan ok so after Nasir's death who is Nasir? grandson of Il Tutmish Il Tutmish and he was brought as a uh, uh, he was made as a wajir for uh, Nasir so after his death he declared himself as Sultan and he carried military and civil reforms in administration which earned him the position of the greatest Sultanate ruler after Il Tutmish and Alauddin Khil Khilji and Balban was a strict ruler and his court was symbol of austerity and strict obedience to the emperor he even demanded that people prostrate before the king okay so people should stand or 
bow towards the king when whenever the king came so he was a strict ruler he was a strict ruler and even demanded that people should prostrate before the king he laid out the severe punishments to the slightest of offenses by his of courtiers L lots of harsh punishment given for the even the slightest mistake and he had a spy system also which keeps the nobles checking he used to check the nobles through his spy system and uh, introduction of the persian festival of the navroj in india Punjab saw large scale conversion during his rule and after his death his grandson Kaikaba succeeded him at the throne of Delhi that after his death Kaikaba succeeded him at the throne of delhi and kakabad died of a stroke in kakabad the grandson of him and he died of a stroke in 1290 and was succeeded by his 3 year old son samsuddin kayumars so kayumars was murdered by jalaluddin uh, firuz khalji and thus ending the mamluk mamluk dynasty to replace it with the khalji dynasty so after this like uh, kakubad succeeded him at the throne of delhi and uh, uh, he died of a stroke he died of a stroke and succeeded by his 3 year old son and 3 year old son his son was also murdered by jalaluddin फिरूज खिलजी खिलजी और खलजी खिलजी एंड दस दिस वॉज द इंड ऑफ मामलिंग टेंस सर दस इंडिंग द मामलुक डायनेस्टी और स्लेव डायनेस्टी विच रिप्लेस्ड बाई खिलजी डायनेस्टी ओके और खलजी डायनेस्टी okay so what was the reason behind the mamluk dynasty that decline of the mamluk dynasty reason for the decline of mamluk dynasty so mamluk uh mamluk lacked major welfare skills which resulted in the defeat against ottomans lacked major warfare skills which uh, resulted in the defeat with the ottomans and uh, many of the rulers were weak to handle the kingdom for long and the third was like uh, many of the ruler were weak to handle the kingdom for long further uh improper administration management led to disruption of the government improper administration management led to the disruption of the government so this was about all the uh, this was uh, about mamluk dynasty if anything is there doubt you can uh, you uh, in the details i have given how to ask for the doubt and you if if you go through the video again or pause and see you will understand it really like you will understand it with the deep uh, with the knowledge around it so it is really lots of uh, rulers are involved in this one so it may be confusion for you so if you, but if you followed the videos from uh, starting to the end 100% you will understand it you will understand the whole story okay so thank you